Let me put the nail in this coffin real tight. God hates a coward. God hates a coward. 21 and 8 says, but the cowardly and the unbelievers, murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, which is the second death. God wrote that I didn't. Who leads the list of that ragtag mob? The cowardly. Look at your spiritual forefathers in the faith. Moses with a shepherd's staff invades the royal court of Pharaoh. Pharaoh who's considered God on earth, who has the most mighty army that any nation ever assembled together. And he looked him in the face and said, let my people go. He was not afraid. Look at David, the shepherd boy, bringing a sling. And David and, da and Goliath is coming against him. And David looks at him and said, you come to me with a sword and spear, but I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. Duck Leroy, here comes an exceeding head rake you're not gonna get over. Jesus, uh, he's in the garden of Gethsemane. He's praying. 500 Roman soldiers come from the Antonian fortress to arrest one Jewish rabbi praying in the garden. Think about that. 500 battle-ready Roman soldiers to arrest one Jewish rabbi praying with 12 sleeping disciples. They said, we seek Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am he. And they fell on the ground like dead men. Jesus was no coward. I want to tell you something. Jesus lost his life at Calvary, but he didn't lose the fight. God will give you only what you're willing to fight for. Satan attacks you because you're God's child and he hates God's property. Satan attacks you because you're the light of the world and he's the prince of darkness. Satan attacks you because you're the truth and he's the father of lies. Satan attacks you because you're a soldier of the cross. You're anointed. You have the word of God. You have covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. You can take the sword of the truth of God and attack the gates of hell. You're a threat to him. Whenever you roll over in bed, every devil in Bear County gets a migraine headache. That's why he hates you. And to those of you who name the name of Christ, stop allowing Satan and his demonic goons to, to destroy your marriage. Put on the whole armor of God and fight back. Quit allowing him to attack your health. The Bible says by his stripes we are healed. Quit allowing him to attack your finances. The Bible says God will rebuke the devourer for your sake. He will make him give it back to you sevenfold. Stop allowing the devil to rob you of your peace because Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. Stop allowing Satan to rob you of your joy. In his presence is the fullness of joy. Do you want it? Then fight for it. Do you want it? Then fight for it. Put on the whole armor of God and stand beside me and take the word of the holiness of the Father. Fight the good fight of faith. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We who carry this book have so taken from Jesus Christ his nature. We have forgotten who he is. He is the son of God who looked at his crowd one day and said, you are of your father the devil. That's not very commonly preached in the church of America today. The fact is that God will give you what you're willing to fight for. In this war, you will demonstrate courage or cowardice. Some of you are courageous soldiers of the cross and some of you are cowardly to the core. You don't deserve the name of following Jesus Christ. Now here's what else you must do in the summer. Like a father, you must look out for your enemies. And believe me, we're gonna have some. But remember, like a father who would guard carefully his family, I'm asking you to stand guard I'm asking you to stand at the door. I'm asking you, whatever threatens you, threaten it back. Whatever pushes against you, push it back. Whatever wants to overwhelm you like a father, stand up, take control, and do battle with your enemies wherever you find them. Be strong in the Lord. Say that with me. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. When you eat this meat for men and milk for children, you'll be strong in the Lord. When you watch 40 hours of television, you couldn't give your witness in the first church of any church in America. 
This is God's fight, it's not yours. It's God's victory, it's not yours. It's God's glory, it's not yours. It's God's kingdom, it's not yours. It's God's strength, it's not yours. Put on the whole armor of God and fight and fight to win because the victory is ours through Christ the Lord. Give him praise in the house of God. What's the point I'm making here? The point is you can never exhaust God's resources. You can never exhaust God's resources because he can do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. You can see his mighty power, but when he gets through, he's not exhausted. He has much more strength ready to give you from day unto day. He can defeat any giant that's before you. He can produce dreams in the desert. He can produce manna that will fall from the sky. He can send cloven tongues the fire in the upper room. He can walk on the water in the Sea of Galilee and salvage you. The thing that you think is about to destroy you, he can use it for a sidewalk to save you. When you grow weary, he can make you to run like Elijah 40 miles before the chariot. When you grow faint, he can give you strength. He can send you power that you can't begin to touch. You cannot exhaust God's power. Give him praise in the house of God. He can walk into the tomb of Lazarus and say, Lazarus, come forth! Why does he call Lazarus by name? Because if he didn't call him by name, he has so much strength, every dead man on planet Earth would have gotten up. That's why. Our God is an awesome God. He is full of grace and truth. He is of the Almighty, El Shaddai, the conqueror of death, hell, and the grave. He's the conqueror of sickness and death. He's the conqueror of powers and principalities. He's the conqueror from Calvary. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the Lord of glory. And he's coming soon with power and great glory. Give him praise in the house of God. Now here's what else you must do in the summer. Like a father, you must look out for your enemies. Now here's one more. We must also deal with the enemies within ourselves. Yes, we've got enemies on the outside, but some of the enemies are not way off in some distant country. Some of the enemies are a lot closer than that. They are within. And I want to give you a list of some of the things to watch out for when you get back home called enemies within your self here's the first one indifference whatever you do practice not being casual you've got to shake off sometimes the lethargy that would say oh well maybe it's not going to work for me or I'll just go along and see what happens I'm asking you whatever you do the intensity that you've gathered up here during this extravaganza, I want you to take this same intensity home with you. <coughs> Don't be casual. Casualness creates casualties. Go home with a renewed intensity. Don't let indifference take over. Here's the next one, indecision. Someone's mentioned it a couple of times on this stage. They've had to deal with it. You've got to deal with it. Indecision is called the thief of opportunity. Make decisions even if it's a wrong decision. Do the very best you can, make a decision and go with it. If it doesn't work out because it was a wrong decision, I'm telling you, that gives you experience now to make a better decision. Here's the next one, doubt. We've all got to deal with the enemy of doubt. Cynicism has a unique way of crowding in on all of us. Being cynical about the government, being cynical about banks and money, being cynical about society, being cynical about the past, cynical about the future. I'm asking you, don't let that disease grab you by the throat and ruin your chances to do well. Yes, it's easy to doubt that it can happen. It's easy to doubt. We've all got fears that want to crowd in. And I say to you that if it can happen to us, it can happen to anybody in this room. Don't doubt your own ability. Don't doubt your own strength. Next is worry. But here's the clue. Don't let it conquer you. Take all of the worries you've got and try to drive them into the smallest corner you can possibly find. If you don't, worry will be like a mad dog loose in the house. It'll have you in the corner. So whatever your enemies are here, drive them into a small corner. Here's the next one. Over caution. 
hey, in the spring, if you're too cautious, you never will plant the seed. If you're too cautious, you won't take the chance. If you're too cautious, you won't step out front. If you're so cautious, you probably never would have done your first meeting. Make this note, you got to take a chance. Drive your tendency to be too cautious. Drive it into a small corner. Yes, you can't be gullible. No, you can't go for everything. Yes, you've got to be careful. Yes, but don't be so cautious that it paralyzes you. Don't be so cautious that it restricts your chance to do better. See if you can't conquer that. Here's the next one, pessimism. Yes, there's the dark side. Yes, there's the problem side. Yes, there's the difficult side. But I'm telling you, it's not the only side. Yes, the glass is half empty, but it's also half full. Yes, there's the dark side, but there's the light side. Yes, the night comes, but so does the day. I'm telling you, don't be afraid of both sides, opportunity and difficulty, chance and danger. Learn how to handle it all.